tuning in to uh, Jesus Paid It All radio program. Um, I uh, know Mr. Lloyd was making the announcement uh, for us and for uh, Derwin and Aileen Henson. They are going to be right up the road this evening. Let me find that for sure. Uh, 4934 Peacock Road. Uh, that's Smyrna Baptist Church in Whiteville, North Carolina at 6 p.m. So you got time to get in your car and get up there and get a seat. Hopefully you'll go out and be with them. They put on um, a great, if you want to call it a concert, I think they just worship the Lord with the talents that uh, God has blessed him with, but they would love to have you there this evening if you can get there and be with them. Um, we would like to take this opportunity to, uh, to um, thank all those folks that I have attended recently to the little church where we pastor there. And it's always good to be out and be with those folks uh, there at the uh, Little River Community Church. And I pray that uh, it'll be a blessing to them. Uh, to Miss Alberta Baruta, she was able to come out for Friend and Family Day a couple weeks ago, her and some of her family. And it was uh, such a, a pleasure to have them. And so we'll send the whole program out to her this evening. And we'll send it out to... Um, there's a gentleman out here, I uh, went out to the barber shop in Loris there and um, sang one day out where Jack Murphy has his station there and uh, there was a gentleman there, I believe his last name was Vaughn, they called him Big Bam Boom, he would come in and sing and play and um, I heard him on there Friday, um, but uh, I believe it was Friday evening maybe he had had a heart attack and passed away and so we'll send it out to all those that would... Uh, be friends or family of his as well and pray that uh, uh, that God will comfort them and bless them at this time I used to think we had all the time we need to plow the field and plant the seed
reach out for mercy's hand While God's still searching for someone to till the land Yes, God's still searching for someone to till the land for workers that's for sure God's always looking for someone uh, that will fill the position uh, that is available believe me there are plenty of uh, positions that are available uh, when it comes to working for the Lord I want to uh, take this time to make this announcement as well uh, we have our first uh, Saturday night of the month gospel sing that will resume this Coming Saturday night, the 2nd of September at 6 o'clock at the Little River Community Church, um, a fellow uh, in his group from King, North Carolina, will be coming to the church, um, be uh, Kenny Griffin in full circle, and so hopefully you can come out and be with us and enjoy that time there together. We will have uh, refreshments served in our fellowship hall after the service at 6 o'clock. We'll uh, sing from maybe 6 to 7, and then we'll have uh, a time of fellowship there. And then they will be back with us. They're staying overnight with some friends. As a matter of fact, uh, they said about 18 people or so from their church was coming, and so uh, they will be in town. They're going to come back and sing for us on that Sunday morning as well on the 3rd. So uh, hopefully you can come out and be with us there. Uh, on that. We'll send this uh, program out to uh, Duck Run Community Church, Pastor Curtis uh, and Wilma Jones, and uh, pray that it's a blessing to them. Send it out to my mother, uh, Betty Bastine, if she watches this, and to my kids and grandkids if they ever watch this for whatever reason. Whoever it is, um, anywhere that watches this program, I love you. I appreciate um, the support that you send uh, through your prayers. Never asked for anything. It just, uh, it's just not, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. I'm thankful for the folks that uh, do send something and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, honored that uh, maybe someone sees enough that they want to help uh, me try to get the word out there. But uh, whether it's me or not, whoever it is that you give to, if they're doing the work of the Lord, then uh, my prayer is that uh, that ministry will be blessed as well. Um, we'll send the program out to Brad and Gina Harris and to their daughter, uh, Allie. Uh, they're in Pottsville, um, Pennsylvania. Hopefully uh, sometime within the next month or two we'll be able to visit with them uh, for a weekend, hopefully. Uh, send it out to them as well and pray that it'll be a blessing to them today. I don't know if uh, Larry Dean Skaggs would have an opportunity to watch this back home, uh, he and Kathy, but uh, he always said to me, um, this is the song I want sang at my funeral. Well, just because I'm singing it, don't get any ideas. But every time I sing it, I think of you. When I come to the river at the ending of day And the last winds of sorrow have blown There will be somebody Show me the way, and I won't have to cross Jordan alone. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus died on my sins to Jesus. 
Jesus died all my sins to atone. When the darkness I see you be waiting for me, I won't have to cross Jordan alone. I also would like to send that out to uh, to Bev and Vale uh, Carter if they are listening and pray that it's a blessing to them uh, today. I, uh, I've been thinking about a song. I'm not sure that I can do it, um, but that's not going to stop me. It's been on my mind, so I'm going to give it a shot, I guess. Um, I, I sang this here a while back, and it's something my dad used to sing, and he sang it for years. Um, you know, sometimes people's lives aren't uh, picture perfect. There are times that there are a lot of things happen in someone's life that uh, maybe you wish that you could not have went through or take back or relive a time and you know sin really takes people down and sometimes uh, you don't really see that until you're out of that lifestyle and um, a lot of people out there no doubt that this song would be a be a blessing to it's it's old uh, it's been sang for years I think I mentioned the last time maybe uh, Earl Adams may have sang it Curtis Jones my dad learned it from them it's a Leuven Brothers song but um, I just like the words to it a house but not a home was the picture Satan painted for sweet little sister and me Daddy would curse while mother was praying. His heart was so hardened that he would not believe. In anger he cursed his voice cold and loud. His Sundays were spent gambling crowd I never saw my daddy inside the house of God for Satan held his hands while down the path of sin he trod not long ago our circle children ride. The angels rejoiced in heaven last night. I heard Daddy pray, dear God, make things right. He was singing and praying with tears in his eyes. take uh, time here to get into the word and we uh, we named this program Jesus paid it all when we uh, when we started it I realized from having uh, uh, about three radio programs in the past uh, that it's usually good to have a theme song you can come on and off the air with and uh, and so as I began to look I thought of that song how he did pay it all and he continues to pay it he paid the price so I would not have to and so you would not have to but it doesn't mean that uh, everyone will accept that the scripture says the wages of sin are death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord you have to come through him 
It is through and by Him. That is the only way. You know, this world today seems very confused, seems very mixed up. It's, uh, you hear these words a lot, uh, politically correct, and how that it is important for uh, us to kind of fit the mold that other people want to put us in. Folks, no more can they fit the mold that uh, the Word of God tries to uh, say that we need to live by than can we be forced into a mold um, that the secular world would say to us we need to live by or to accept. I said this morning to our congregation of folks that were there at our church that um, there will come a time, and it has happened no doubt for years in other areas, and maybe it's already happened to you, where you will lose friends, where you will lose those people who have been family members and lose maybe contact with them because uh, they will be wanting of us to accept or to uh, maybe condone certain things. That The Word of God says that you cannot do that. And it doesn't just, I know, the church world and sometimes uh, people that have uh, been forgiven can uh, just rattle off some of the things that really God hates and some of the things that really are an abomination to God. But let me tell you something, sin separates us, folks. So no matter what it is in a person's life, we cannot condone sin. We cannot love sin and uh, be right with God. Yes, can we love the sinner? Absolutely. I don't suppose there's anything my children will ever do to make me not love them. Everything they choose to do, I will neither condone, I will neither appreciate, I will not uh, stand back and just say, you go have at it and do whatever it is your heart feels like telling you to do, but I will always love them. And it's the same with God. I really believe that God loves us. He sent his son to die for us. He looks at the condition uh, that man is in because of sin, and he, he understands uh, folks, if you don't know this by now, you should really realize this, that Satan can do absolutely nothing uh, to hurt God. But what does he do? He comes uh, at God and tries to get to him through us, the creation. He tries to come and tries to destroy us. And if he can destroy us, it is something that uh, he's able then to bring some pain uh, to the heart of God. God has laid out a plan of salvation for all of us. And we must choose that way. We must take that way. Now, there are going to be some things that you may experience in your life. Um, that you may have a desire for um, things to turn out differently than what they have. You, just because we give our hearts to the Lord does not mean that everything's going to be great with you. Does not mean that the opportunity for you to sin is still not going to be there. It will be there. Does not mean that you won't be human. You're probably more human now. You, you are more aware of you living in the flesh and the flesh being a part of you than maybe what you've ever been when you give your heart to the Lord because you didn't maybe struggle so much before with temptation with those things. It was our nature and so we just acted upon it. But now with the love of God abiding in us, the Spirit of God directing us, it is a way for us to see. Um, I cannot make people love the Lord. I cannot make people love me. Uh, I see what happens and what has continued to happen, and I believe it will continue and continue and continue until the time the Lord comes back. I realize that the older generation of folks who maybe their parents took them to church or at least made them go and taught them and they learned about the Lord, I see that those folks have died off and it's been a generation or two, if not longer than that, in some families where families have went without hearing the Word of God, without a knowledge of the Word of God. They have grown to despise those people that proclaim the Word of God because they look at them as if somebody that is trying to run their life or dictate their life or rule their life. And really, that is the, that is the whole idea of what the Scripture says when it says men love darkness rather than light. They always cling to what they want more than what is best for them. 
always and it, it seems like that it's it's a never-ending cycle you see that uh, when somebody stands on the news and they're interviewed about some of the things that have happened recently in our country they say I don't understand it's like the whole world has gone crazy when God said to Adam and to Eve the day you eat of that tree you will surely die he did not doubt what would happen he could see it they could not how do you think they felt when their son killed their other son. All because knowing that sin had entered in and what they had allowed. And now, uh, now we are told that we need to be accepting and we need to just condone and we need to just allow. And folks, I will tell you, uh, nowhere in the Word of God does it ever say that you have to back up on something that you believe. Now, I'm a pastor, and I've pastored for 20 years. i preached for 25 years. If there's something that's wrong, and I have that in my life, and I say the Word of God says it's wrong, it's still wrong. You could look at me and say, well, Brother George, you shouldn't be doing that. And if I was where I need to be, I wouldn't be doing it. And I would agree with you. Yes, I shouldn't be. But my life and your life does not change the Word of God. The Word of God is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. Uh, what is it that this world needs today? Does it need to come together as the Beatles said years ago? Come together. Yeah, it needs to come together. Doesn't need to come together and meet down at the local watering hole and have a drink and let's work this out. It doesn't need to come together underneath the roof of, of some kind of a secular teaching that tells us that we are all gods or that we can all be good or, or that all those things. It needs to come together under the banner of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on Calvary. Will it ever? No. You say, Brother George, you, you have a negative attitude about that. No, I just think that that's reality. If hell enlarges itself every day, somebody's going there. And do you know what? When you look around, you would look and see whenever it was instructed uh, that uh, God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, it was instructed that uh, they would go and they would share the word, they would tell about this destruction, but still, still, and there were those folks that stayed there. Why is that? Because men love darkness rather than light. There are people that are in love with this world and the treasures of this world and the pleasures of this world. What happens when it sinks into the roots of your family? It begins to take your children down. And people that have walked with the Lord for years have seen it happen, seen it in their homes, seen where sin has come in, and it devours you. Folks, I don't believe that you ever just go to a doctor on the first day that you have cancer in your body, and the doctor tells you that now tomorrow you may die because we just found out you had it. You didn't just find out one day and have it that whole time, maybe. It started somewhere. You just found out that you had it, but somewhere it started back a while and it's been eating and devouring and growing and that's what sin does when it comes into a home when it comes into a person's life it continues to eat to devour it continues to grow and it is something that first i said to our church this morning and sometimes this may be offensive to people but it's something that we seem like we pick what sins we will allow god doesn't allow any sin you can pick something you may feel like you're comfortable with, but God doesn't allow any. Is this world hurting? Yes, it's hurting. The book of Acts in chapter 3, we read the story of Peter and John. They're going to the temple about the ninth hour to pray. And as they're going into the temple, there is a man laid at the gate called Beautiful. He's laid there asking alms, expecting to receive help. Do you know what this world needs today? It needs help. Do you know this man, what he's about to receive is something that he never saw coming. He's expecting that he would receive something that maybe would help him or help him if he had a family to feed his family. I don't know his situation. All I know was that he could not get up and walk. He could not work. If he could not walk, he probably could not work. And so here he was there and he was begging and asking for alms. And Peter said to him, look upon us. And when he looked on them, he was expecting to receive something. You know, this world not only needs something, there's a lot of things that it needs, but there's a lot of things that it wants, and it wants to receive those. It wants to live. Sometimes I look at our society as a spoiled child. 
It wants all the blessings of God, but it wants to live like the devil. And folks, we can't do that. You can think whatever you want to, but God is not pleased in that. When the next thing that hits the uh, land, that hits the country of the United States, no matter what it is, if there's war that comes here, no matter what it is that happens here, if we expect that we're going to stand up because we pushed God out of just about everything and then try to stand up and say, oh, God bless America and God be with us. Now, we don't want Jesus, but we'll take God. Uh, we can see different times in our life time since I've lived and I'm going to be 50 years old in a couple months so I've not lived a long time but I can see the vast changes from people who really called out on God believed in him believed on his son Jesus Christ and now just the people who want to claim a God of their own understanding whatever that may mean but they want to live how they want to live the brother that was on before me said the words of Jesus hey you can expect them to hate you. They hated me, and if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Is that something you want? Is that something as a pastor I want, is for people to despise the words that I say? You know what? When you can stand and give someone the Word of God, if you can stand and tell them, look, I love you, but this is what the Scripture says. When this man here, as he's laying there expecting them to give him something, Peter looks on him and says, I don't have silver and gold. If that's what you're wanting, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I have, I give to you. Now, he picked him up, and the Scripture says that he raised him up, and he was able to walk in leaping. He went in with them into the temple. What did he give that man that day? He gave him the love that God showed to him through sending his son Jesus Christ. Peter was able to not only give him that. Yes, he restored his physical ability to walk. Yes, he did. Is that something I can do? No. But when I'm preaching the Word of God, when I'm reading the Word of God, when the Word of God gives illustration that I can reach down to you and say to you, my brother, my sister, I love you. Let me help you. Let me help pull you out of that muck and that mire you're in where the world has told you that you're all right and that you're believing everything's going to be fine. I hear this all the time in the work that I do. People say, I'm hoping that the big man upstairs really understands and we've got an agreement. I'm telling you something, folks. The big man upstairs, I don't even look at him as that. I look at him as my heavenly father. And he reaches down to us and he loves us. Jesus, when he was here on this earth, said how often would he have taken his in and gathered them in as a mother hen would gather her brood. But they would not. You know what happens today? There are a lot of folks that want absolutely nothing to do with it. You know, I think that there are probably a lot of people that would be fantastic with gospel programming going off the airwaves that would just be tickled to death if you shut down every church that's here. And can I honestly know what that feels like? Yeah, I probably could because I'd be all right with it if they'd shut down all the other stuff too that I don't agree with. If you'd shut down all the bars, all the clubs, all that stuff, I'd be all right with that. So I understand. I've been on that side and I can see that. But hopefully those people that are in those buildings tonight aren't putting their foot on someone's chest and then trying to pull them up and saying, let me help you by pushing them down. There's no, there's no way, no need for me to push people down. All it is for me is just to be able to look and say, hey, Christ loved me. He forgave me. Here's my hand. Let me help you up. I love the saying, as has been said many times, I'm just a beggar trying to tell another beggar where to find food. In this book of Acts, in chapter 3, we find that Peter and John, Peter gives this man something greater than he's ever received in his life. You say, what was it? The ability to walk? Not only that, but where's the first place he walked? He walked into the house of God to give him praise. My prayer is today that if you're out there and you're listening to this or you would watch this, and maybe the only reason if you do watch this, when I put this out, if the only reason you watch this is because either you are my friend or you are my family. Let me tell you something. I love you. God loves you. He wants to reach down for you and bring you out from where you are. My prayer is, is that you will allow him to do that. He did pay it all. He paid the price. You have to accept that. Or one day you will have to pay that yourself. Jesus paid it all along. To him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain.
stain. He washed it white as snow. Back over to you, Mr. Lloyd. Brother George, be sure to join us again next Sunday at this same time. For Jesus played your own ministry with Evangelist George Bastine. If you'd like to contact Evangelist George Bastine,